helping with a deposit, parents and children, these kind of different ways to go about it, so I'm going to get into that. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Effectively, there are uh, multiple ways that you, you can do it, right? And one of the ways uh, which we hear about a lot is a guarantee. Another way could be borrow and give, where the parents actually borrow the amount and give it to the child. And then the second thing could be taking a joint loan for the deposit amount. Each one of these options has its pros and cons. Obviously, you'd want to get specialist financial advice. This is very generic. Um, and of course, you'd want to uh, talk to your lawyer before transacting anything. But a guarantee is effectively pretty simple to understand. Key thing here is it's probably a good idea, um, most would suggest, to do a what's called a limited guarantee for only what is required for the deposit amount, okay? Um, now, the advantage with borrowing the actual funds and giving it to the child is this. Um, if in the event of, uh, let's say, the world turns to custard and something happens to this loan, under a guarantee scenario, you can be called upon on the shortfall or whatever, a lump sum basically on one day. Whereas with borrowing and giving, as long as the repayments are met, which would be a lot smaller than the entire amount, um, then this house is safe. A joint loan is where uh, the child, or the child and the spouse, are doing a basically a joint loan for the deposit amount with the parents, uh, of course, and uh, using that as a deposit with a separate lender under just the children's name. So that has its own advantages. Um, again, look. Some of this might be acceptable, might not be acceptable by all banks. So it's important to talk to someone like myself first before you go down the road of getting the legal advice, which you should do, of course, before transacting. Hopefully that has been kind of helpful. Uh, thank you for watching.